But here's Max Boot. For those of you guys who forgot who Max Boot is, which I assume is most of you guys, uh, he was one of the OG Never Trump Republicans. He went as far as to sort of exit the Republican Party, disown the party entirely, the sort of politically homeless conservative. But here he is uh, when asked how Biden is handling the lack of support within his own party over his handling of the Israel-Gaza war. So here's some some love, some words of support from uh, exiled Republican Max Boot. Visions within the United States about what to do uh, on Hamas in Israel, on the considerable support we've seen among progressives for uh, Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, I think a surprise to some political figures in the United States. Are there calibrations, are there changes or adjustments the, administ the Biden administration ought to be making because of what they see happening with American public opinion? I think what President Biden is doing is basically the right thing, and I think it's very politically courageous, and I don't, think he, I don't think he gets enough credit for it, which is basically he is going against the base of the Democratic Party, which is increasingly critical of, of Israel. There was a recent poll that showed only 18 percent of Democrats think that what Israel is doing is the right thing right now. But, you know, President Biden, Joe Biden, is a very instinctive pro-Israel, pro-Zionist kind of guy, and he understands the horror that Israel suffered on 10-7, on and so he's backing Israel's right to defend itself all the time. Okay, so here you have uh, a guy who might find himself a good home in the Democratic Party, because what do they always say? They always say the Republicans fear their base, the Democrats hate their base, right? The Democrats look down on their base. They have contempt for their base. And so in the Democratic Party, when you defy 82% of your own voters, which is what he just said there, because he says only 18% right. of Democrats have a favorable view of Israel at the moment, uh, when you defy most of the party, you actually get points for that in Democratic circles. The media actually loves when you stick it in the eye of the base. Yep. And, yep. you know, Russell, you talk about your lib days, so I don't know if this is true for you, but I imagine that this kind of narrative gets very easily absorbed by people who watch MSNBC, you're right? And even the people who may be critical of Israel, they'll say, well, you know, he he's right. He does deserve credit for sticking true to his principles. You know, we got a lot of young, idealistic people in the party who want everything their way, but no, 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 you have to hold the line uh, and stand either for principle or in this case for defense contractors and for our aircraft carrier in the region, right? But there's always an excuse what you have to do, right? What you have to do to satisfy some other imperative, whether it's, you know, donors or foreign interests or electability, right? Or in this case, it's hurting that. But there's always some other decision that you have to weigh against the actual, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, will of your own voters. And so maybe I he should register as a Democrat now. This is the way, the, this is the way all their strategists talk behind closed doors. I have got to say, and this is this is some of what I was talking about last night on uh, generational change. Um, there's no equivalent <laughs> to the things that have happened over the last few years from the days when I was a lib. That's why I'm not one anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the red pill moment came with the Sanders campaign. Things like this, where you have 82 percent of the Democrats are against something and you got the president just continuing to pile on. There's there was never anything like that because you never had that level of disagreement from the people who vote. Like, I can't remember anything that had 82 percent disapproval from Democrats that the establishment wanted. Right, That's that why you're getting supported. such weird alliances and enmities around Israel. You're getting people you would never have expected to take the right position. You're, you're getting people that you expected to be better turning out to be rabid Zionists. That's part of why the reaction has been so unpredictable. You can't compare this to anything that happened when I was a, a, a registered, you know, vote blue, no matter who, enthusiastic Democrat. There was never anything like this. As soon as we got something that was very red pilly, I was out. And now even the people who are still in, 
this is another red pill. That was what my article was about. This is another level of how much cognitive dissonance can you lay on people before they just can't do it anymore. I mean, the closest parallel, I would think, would be like the Obamacare fight where Obama was pushing for a market based reform, even though a large majority of the party wanted Medicare yeah, for all. But not, nothing, nothing like this. Because he was because, still going in what we perceived to be the correct direction, even if he wasn't going far enough. Not, they still thought he only, was moving in the right direction, whereas this is just he's completely at odds with the base of the party and not even just the base. I mean, 82 percent. You're talking about the base plus some even right. more casual Democrats. Yeah, not only the base, uh, not only moving in the right direction, that all fit neatly within the mythology of why you would still support the Democrats. The Democrats want to do socialism. They want to give you Scandinavian-style socialism, but the Republicans won't let them. So Even though that, was, that was not true in Obamacare's case. I mean, we fell for it I, at the time. I, I understand that. I'm right. explaining. This no, is the logic yeah. for libs. Right. Like, that's what, that's, so you don't get that kind of resistance to that. I, I don't remember anyone in the, like, the mainstream of the Democratic Party saying anything other than this is the best he could do within the system because you can't get, you, know, you got to get Lieberman, right? You know, then it comes to the conservative Democrats, the mansion of his day, right? You got to, you got to persuade him. And otherwise like that whole thing is what holds the myth together. And if you, if you talk to people who are still in that tent, these are, these are the people who are so fucking stupid that even in the face of all evidence to the contrary, they're still whistling that tune. They still believe that, but it's such a dwindling number of people because of things like this. There, there. I, I really, there was never an equivalent of anything like this, not, not in my lifetime, where you had such a disconnect between the establishment and the party. I mean, you'd have, probably have to go back to Vietnam. Yeah, and now you're seeing that reflect in the numbers. I mean, the number I keep coming back to: seventeen percent of Arabs. According to the last poll, plan to support right. Joe Biden. I've never seen anything like that. You there was don't nothing see like polling that like around that around ever. Obamacare. Nothing no. like that around. All all the narrative around Obamacare was that was within their comfort zone. Oh, these damn Republicans. Oh, these damn concern. Oh, darn it, darn it. If only this person weren't there, we have to vote harder. We have to support this. It's incremental change. The arc of the universe bending towards justice. We're getting there. We'll get to the mountaintop. Uh, emerging democratic majority, and then we'll get universal health care. All that shit fit within the narrative of the way that played out. This, there, there's no. You can't blame the Republicans. The the president has uniquely. Uh, unlimited power when it comes to uh the military yeah within this is an our executive system. branch decision yep it's an executive branch decision so you can't say oh the republicans are making them do it you have to own it and how do you do that and that's why you have so many people you would never expect who are at odds with biden on this please clap